Well, this could be the final part of Pennabont. The rules are very simple. The moment we get knocked out of Europe, I am resigning. We've got the final qualifying round for the Conference League still to come. We should theoretically win that. We play Linfield, who we've already played in the first qualifying round for the Champions League and beat them. They've looped back round to us. We also beat them in the first qualifying round last year. I would like to think we're going to find our way into the Conference League league stage again and then hopefully go one better than last year and end up in the knockout rounds and end up with another two or three episodes and another almost full season and see how deep we can get in the Conference League. That's the goal. There is always the chance, though, that we're going to play two matches and quit because we lost. So, I don't know. This could be the last one. Last night was an event for one. Obviously, you are all caught up through the medium of Lelujo 2, where we now have over 27,000 subscribers. And this month, we are closing in on half a million views on Lelujo 2. I'm going to say that again because it's stupid. This month, we are closing in on half a million views on Lelujo 2. For context, the main channel this month has had 1.3 million views. We are almost at the point where Lelujo 2 is getting half the amount of views as the main channel that I've been working on tirelessly for seven years. It's madness. When is Lelujo 3? As soon as they start paying for shorts, <laughs> we'll, I'll hire another editor and we'll do a Lelujo 3. Chris can just look after Lelujo 2. He hates shorts anyway. He is itching for the day that I stop asking him to do shorts because he yeah, hates them. He really hates... There you go. I'm fine with that. He hates them. Such, a, such an old curmudgeon. Old curmudgeonly Chris, who doesn't like doing what the cool kids like to watch. Too old and not cool enough for TikTok. If anyone is a real top-tier shorts editor and wants to join Team Lelujo and bring shorts to the party and do with Lelujo 3, which doesn't even exist yet, what Chris has spent the last year doing to Lelujo 2, we might need to have a, a conversation. A box was just done 50 gifted. And... The offie's just done another 20 gifted. And, well, <laughs> between the two of them, 3,983. The 24 hour stream is 17 subs away from being a reality. That's mental. That is. Mental. And we've done a level 12 hype train. Remember that first night? We are going to play some Football Manager in a minute. I know it's mad how these streams start now. We just have 20 minutes of people throwing subs at me and then we get into it. <laughs> the Offie's just done it. Is that the Offie? No, it's not. It's Veggie1999. has just done... What is that? A gifted sub? And then the Offie has done 20 subs. And there we have it. Gig Doyle has done five and we are over 4,000 subs. The 24-hour stream is happening. <laughs> I don't want to do a 24-hour stream. I hate them. Uh, Bosty, thank you for another five gifted as well. What's for 5K? Genuinely, at this point, I have no idea. I have nothing left to give. I don't know. What on earth could we do at 5K? While wetter, thank you very much for 10 gifted as well. Um, are we doing 10 a.m. to 10 a.m. or 10 p.m. to 10 p.m.? It'll probably be 10 a.m. to 10 a.m. Um, because it's easier to do. I realize ending at 10 p.m. makes more sense from a getting people in at the end point of view, but from a me not dying at my desk point of view, just staying up all night, then going to bed makes a lot more sense than being awake all day and then starting a 24-hour stream just as I'm normally going to bed. That's bonkers. So, uh, yeah, it'll probably be morning to morning is how we'll do it, I guess. But I'll work out the actual plan and we'll figure it out. So, last night, if you missed it and also missed the highlights on Illusio 2 this morning, 
Um, we did some transfers. I think we did. We had a good summer of transfers. We signed a lot of quality. We've massively inflated our wage uh, expenditure. We were spending like seven or eight k a week last year. We're now spending thirty five thousand pounds a week on wages. We still have some transfer budget left over as well, so we could potentially go and buy a player if we wanted to go and buy a player. But I think the squad is more than good enough to achieve what we want to achieve. We've got 10 of the 11 in the media, Dream 11. I'm tempted to go out and buy this guy just so we can have a full set that Swindon want him. So I imagine he's most likely to go to Swindon. It is important to note as well, I am still working without a contract because Emlyn won't offer me more than £240 a week and just yells in my face, it's a pay rise, whenever I argue with him about it. So we could be let go at any point. Uh, but the season started well. We played Linfield in the Champions League first qualifying round, comfortably beat them, got into the second qualifying round and narrowly lost against Polish opposition that I can't say the name of. That led us into the Europa League qualifiers, where it's another very narrow defeat back in Hungary again. We certainly have regular places we go to. It's always uh, Hungary and and Poland, which is why we've added those two leagues on as playable leagues for the next step because the, the game seems to be bringing us to them. Uh, but we did get knocked out of that narrowly again, which brings us all the way looping back round to Linfield, who we played in the first qualifying round of the Champions League, both this year and last year. So for the third time in two years, we are playing two legs against Linfield with a spot in Europe up for grabs. If we beat them again, and we have beaten them every time we've played them so far, if we beat them again, we will end up back in the Europa Conference League league stage like we did last year, but with a much, an infinitely stronger squad, a much better squad than we had last year. And just the hope that maybe this time around, we can get into the Conference League knockout rounds, which this lot last year did, and they only narrowly beat us. We are not far away from being an, an after-Christmas European team. The reason nobody makes a championship manager game anymore is because owning the owning the game, own, owning that name, is not the same as owning the code of the database which Sports Interactive own. Come on, Mr. Forbes. Is Twitch similar to a job where you get paid once a month? Yes, it is. At the end of every month, they tot up what you've earned and you usually get paid the middle of the next month. We could do with a second goal here, boys and girls. Only one nil up from the home leg does leave the the door ajar for Linfield. We beat them more convincingly than this earlier in the summer in the Champions League qualifiers. So if we could do that again now, that would be that would be grand. A second goal. Don't look back to anger. Very important. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Two nil to the bunt. Here the Queen died. I did. That got through to me as well. Believe it or not, anytime anyone dies. Especially if it happens while I'm streaming, the whole of that stream is, did you know so-and-so's dead? Or someone coming into a stream they've never been in before. R.I.P. this person that is irrelevant to the stream. It's madness. That has never been my first instinct when someone is dead. Oh, I've got to go on every Twitch stream I can find and put an R.I.P. message. <laughs> oh, God, yeah, the day Pele died. Every every other person joining the stream, anyone new joining the stream that night was just like, R.I.P. Pele. I mean, what are you doing? We all know he's died. It's sad. You're not breaking that news to us here and you're completely new here. We don't need to know. <laughs> we don't need to know you wish him to rest in peace. What are you doing? Why are you saying that? Oh, she's already said he doesn't want the job. Sean Dice strikes me as someone who's probably earned enough money and is quite happy not doing anything now. Quite enjoying not having a job and being rich enough to not need to work. I can imagine him not wanting to have to move all the way up there. I imagine he's moved back down Northampton Way now. Because his kid plays for Northampton, doesn't he? Oh, here's our fixes. Oh, I tell you what. Knockout rounds, here we come. If we don't make it to the knockout rounds with that set of fixtures, it ain't ever happening. Top eight, here we come. I mean, that might be pushing it a little bit. 
but top 24 is definitely doable. We now know we resign from this football club on the 18th of December, 2025, if we don't qualify for the knockout rounds. Oh, and of course, we've still got this to try and win this year as well. I really do think we should be capable of winning this. The fact that Linfield have won it twice in the last three years and we've beaten Linfield. We've knocked Linfield out of Europe three times in two years. <laughs> We're Linfield's bogey team and they've won it twice. So we should... This man is broken. I did exactly the same thing as you, Christopher. I looked at that and thought he'd offered me £675 a week. I'm not even negotiating with him anymore. If he sacks me, he sacks me. For goodness sake! How many times do we have to play Linfield? Seriously. What are the odds on two teams from different nations playing each other in five competitive games before the middle of October. That feels like a quiz question. Under what circumstances would it be possible for two teams from two different nations to play themselves five times in different competitive fixtures in the first three months of a football season? No one's getting that answer. Sonny Algefri is unfavoured personnel now, though. After surviving a Champions League game without a red card, that was enough to put him on the same level as Tyrese Onyeka. Goodness me. Is Zealand 6'4? Oh, we've got to get the photo out, haven't we? I'm six foot two. <laughs> this is from TwitchCon last summer. So, in answer to your question, is Zealand six foot four? My answer is, I'm six foot two. We are literally the opposites of each other. Even to the point where I had a black shirt, he had black shorts, light coloured shirt with pink on, light coloured shorts with pink on, sunglasses, no glasses, beard, no beard, hairy chest, nine year old boy. We are the opposites of each other. Right, who are we playing? Bala. Let's go beat them. Name names for the mods. Don't make me mod Ben, boys and girls. Then you'll be in trouble if I have to mod Ben. Can you imagine? You know, I wouldn't last a minute. I am wonderful. It's, I mean, that word was basically invented to describe little old me. I'm 40 years old and we're holding firm. I'm, the, when one of you lot becomes 40 and is still pulling this off, then I'll let you ascend to my level of hairline greatness. I am 40 years old, damn it. The hairline decided it no longer wanted to hang around, so off it all went. That's what my dad had to do in his 20s. My brother's just done the buzz, I've noticed, in uh, the last six months or so, and he's three years younger than me. And he's gone for the buzz now. I know that day is coming. I'm clinging on where my hairline has always been at the moment. The moment I start noticing, I mean, that's perhaps the tattoo I need. Just a, a few little dots across here. Just like, I, I want a permanent marker line so I can just check every couple of months. Right. Are we still on the, are we still on the line? Are we still lining up with the dot, the tattoo dots? And as soon as I can see the tattoos emerge, that's when we're off to Turkey. Why, oh, why, oh, why is it only our defenders that can't seem to make it through a football match without getting tired? Bunch of cowards. Right, we can drop we can drop him back there. Darren needs to come on. See Did you all see what I did there? Darren needs to come on. Come on! I can't hear the laughter. That was quality material. Do I like lettuce? I mean does anyone have strong opinions one way or the other on lettuce? I find it hard to believe that anyone has ever given it enough thought to really have much of an opinion. I don't dislike lettuce. It's fine. Let lettuce is fine. Lettuce is garbage. That's bonkers. That is absolute madness.
How can you dislike lettuce to that extent? It's just a thing that you have to bulk out your sandwich or your salad or your burger. It adds a little bit of freshness. It's got some, some stuff in it that's good for you, presumably. It's fine. It's like hating air or water. Exactly. Lettuce is crunchy water, which sounds ace. I like water. Lettuce tier list. It, I mean... Does anybody, um, can anybody tell the difference between different types of lettuce other than by looking at it? So if you just chop the lettuce up and put it in a salad, I find it hard to believe you could tell the difference. The, in, the entire tier list for lettuce would be all types of lettuce just in the middle somewhere. They're all, they're all just fine. No, they're all garbage. You have got, I mean, what has lettuce done to you? You have got some weirdly strong opinions on lettuce. Most of us are a bit floppy compared to iceberg. I mean, you sound like someone who's only ever had a round lettuce or an iceberg lettuce. You need to get some romaine or uh, little gem into your life. If you're trying to tell me that they're all floppy. A round lettuce is floppy. But iceberg is like the ready salted crisps of lettuce. If we're actually going down this lettuce rabbit hole, lettuce is just basic. That iceberg lettuce is so basic. Don't be telling me you're an iceberg fan. Goodness me. Iceberg is the lettuce equivalent of saying Nando's is your favourite restaurant. I won't stand for it. You just said they're all the same. I know, and then you've pushed me on it. You've forced me into You've brought this on yourself. You have forced me into having an opinion, and now you don't like it. Welcome to the internet. You made this happen yourselves. Now deal with it. It's Frankly, it's pathetic. I've had enough. Nando's is great. Oh, we've gone there now. Nando's is also... Nando's, it's, it's just chicken and chips. It's fine. It is neither great nor awful. Where is this curve on the round tables? You don't have topics that I'm this passionate about. If you want to do a round table about lettuce, I am there and I will be passionate. What you've seen there in action, Ben, is you have to really push me to have an opinion. But once you push me, I'll decide my opinion and I'll defend it to the death. Five minutes ago, I did not care one jot about lettuce. Now I am furious. Can't stand Nando's. Said nobody ever. It's just chicken and chips. <laughs> it's in Ah! It's just... Again, it's just in the middle. It is chicken and chips. Unless you're a vegetarian, Nando's should just be fine. Where do eggs belong? In chickens. What's my opinion on cabbage? I always thought I wasn't a fan, but I went out this is such a boring story. Can we move on? <laughs> I mean, I've I've started telling it and I know where it's going. And it's so boring. I think we'll just leave it there. I'm not sure I understand. I don't care if you understand, Siri. It's for the best. Good. I'm interested now. You know, I promise you, you're not. It's so boring. I mean, finish the story. You don't want me to. It's so... I've, I, even worse, I've now built it up into a thing where you think there's a punchline and there isn't. It, the, the full story... 4,000 subs. The full story... I went out for a meal and there was some lettuce and it was quite nice. It's not lettuce, sorry. Cabbage. I've ruined my own story. Can't even tell that it's a bad story as is, and I can't even tell it right. I went out for a meal. It had a side of cabbage with it. The cabbage was quite nice, and I ate it. That's the story. That's why I stopped myself telling it. I sometimes, sometimes, sometimes you just have to believe me when I tell you that there. That I've stopped for a reason. <laughs> you got sometimes just trust my judgment. I said there was nothing to that story and we should have moved on. And you've pushed me again. <laughs> I mean, ah, oh, it was quite nice cabbage. I don't remember where I was. That, the key piece of information I don't remember when or where this happened. I just know it happened. Where, it might have been when we went to Bodine's after EGX, and that was months ago. What are the chances that I got a side of, of cabbage at Bodine? What I need is work the space in the chat, because he was sat next to me during that meal. Jack had to eat my chips because I ordered too much food because I'm old. 
That was the other thing. I had burnt ends, cabbage, chips, ate all my burnt ends, ate all my cabbage because it was quite nice. Couldn't manage my chips, so Jack ate them. That's, the, that's probably the only part of the story that's interesting. Jack ate my chips because I enjoyed the cabbage that much. Who gets a side of cabbage? I think it was like, it was described as coleslaw. But when it came, it was just chopped up cabbage with a little bit of vinegar on it. It was, it could have been pickled cabbage. I didn't, I didn't pay that much attention. But um, yeah, Jack ate my chips. That's, that's the moral of the tale. Where has this story gone to? Jack owes me a plate of chips is where this story has gone to. Sounds like I chose cabbage over chips. I, it wasn't a conscious choice. Getting full. I, why are we still talking about this? The, the the whole fullness thing snuck up on me. If I was if I knew I was going to get full, I obviously would have eaten the good stuff first. Like, there was quite a lot of burnt ends. I ate the cabbage first, thinking it would be horrible, but I thought, right, I better get that at because that's the healthy bit. I'll eat the cabbage. It was quite nice. And then I couldn't manage all my chips. I had some of the chips. I couldn't eat all of the chips. So I gave some of the chips to Jack. I say gave, I left the chips, and then Jack said are you eating those? And I said, no. And he said, can I have them then? I've eaten all my chips. I'd quite like some more. You've got some right there. And I said, Jack, of course, feel free, have my chips. And he did. And he ate them and he enjoyed them. And that is now the entire story. Did Jack say please? I think so. But like, you're not telling the whole story. I mean, there probably is more I can add to it. This was the same night that Zealand paid the entire bill. And then after he'd paid, it said, you guys have got Venmo here, right? And we all just laughed. So, I mean, we could circle this back round to Zealand bought me some cabbage. And I ate it. So actually, you could argue that Zealand ate, that Jack ate Zealand's spare chips. And they were never my, were they ever my chips to begin with? I guess is the important question here. The great philosophical question of our day, were they really Kev's chips to begin with? Exactly. I guess would I guess they were it must have been, surely as soon as the restaurant brings the food, they became my chips. Because when you eat out at a rest this is important now. When you eat at a restaurant, you pay the bill at the end, you're not eating their food. It doesn't become your food after you've paid for it. Surely it's your food as soon as you've eaten it. At what point during a restaurant interaction does the food become your food? Is the question. What do I think of Five Guys chips? They're awesome, but you get too many. This is the most basic opinion I've ever put on the internet, I think. That's everybody's answer to that question. And what, so really, these chips have been owned by both me, Jack, and Zealand at one point in their brief moment of existing. You place the order, your food. Jack asks you for the food and you accept. Transfer to Jack. If the food was to leave the table, whoever takes them. But then the fact that Zealand paid for it. Does he not ever take ownership of this thing that he's the one who's paid for? This is what the inside of my brain is like. This is this is what goes on in my head. I just come on stream and don't think the things, I speak the things. But when I'm just here on my own, this is what this is constantly happening in my brain. <laughs> for goodness sake, Emlyn! Oh, it's the oh it's wrong the button! Cup. I'm glad. Right, Jack, shut up. I am glad I don't actually say the swears. Sponsored by Emirates. I am Belton. I am Belton. Shut up, Jack. I am Belton braces. Not only do I them, beep them, because I know where the button is. I also never actually say them just in case that happens. And I've been doing that for years and I am so glad I belt and braces it. So even when I put, press the wrong button, the swear, the swear doesn't come through. Oh, phew. That would have been a disaster. That being said, Emlyn has made me furious and deserved every bit of it. Walk away. What a disgrace Emlyn is. Now, every time I bleep out a swear, you'll know I'm not actually swearing. <laughs> right then, we are away against Dnipro.
this is one of those games that we kind of have to be competitive in. If we go here and get walloped, this is this is going to be bad. This persona, I guess it is. So is it true what Ben said about me being the worst for swearing? No, that's not true. That's Ben being hilarious. And of course, four minutes in, we've had a red card. This game has just decided that we're not going to do well in Europe and there's nothing we can do about it. And it's infuriating. It's conscious and deliberate. There's always something new that improves. Something new that I'm working on. Oh! Oh, he's done an Adam Eden goal! Lovely stuff. Yeah, to me, logically, you would expect to try and improve because I constantly try and improve, but not everyone has that mindset. And this isn't an invitation to start naming names in the comments. Don't be a wang. Um, but yeah, not everyone. You don't automatically improve just because time has passed. Improvement happens because you try to improve. Come on! Do we need another content? We do need another content clinic soon, yes. I mean, I mean, we're glossing over the fact a little bit. We've just won away from home in Europe against, I would argue, one of the stronger teams that we've got to play. We might... I mean, we're, we're getting to the knockout rounds. There's no question about it. We are doing knockout rounds in Europe this year. We might... Right, I'll say it now. If we win the Conference League, look at that performance from Arthur. 11 saves on an 8.6. If we win the Conference League, we'll do one more year at Bont. Do I regret the Pokemon stuff on the vlog channel or was it worth it? It was definitely worth it to experiment. I mean, I enjoy collecting stuff. And... It was fun making content about that, but no one was watching it. And it was a lot of work to film. I mean, I love stuff, but when my stuff arrives, I just want to tear it open and play with it or look at it. I don't want to have to... I was getting to the point where I'd have a pile of stuff that I was waiting to open so that I could make a video on me opening it. And then it was a lot of faffing about to get Chris to edit it, and then no one would watch it. And it was like, well, what's, what am I waiting for? What's the point? Hours every month to do the brand deals. I have to set a day aside just to record like two or three brand deal videos. And you're not just read it off the screen. No, because if I'm reading it off the screen, rather than looking into the camera like this, I'd be like this. I can't believe we've let them back into this. We were 2-0 up with 10 minutes to go. And we have let them back into the game. What is going on? Right, what is going on? What on earth has just happened? We were 2 0 up with 10 minutes to go. If uh, if I read too much into a one off freak thing happening, I would be a terrible football manager. I mean, I would throw that back at you. They had three shots on target in the entire match and scored them all. Sometimes football managers get a football manager. But, boys and girls, we are going to wrap things up there because I. I mean, I need a poo. I'll have it with you. I need a poo. I'm going to go and have a poo in a minute. Then I think Anna wants to watch The Last of Us. So let's find somebody to raid. Oh, look at that. That that guy who was in the stream earlier. Should we support the little guy? That guy who was in the stream earlier is streaming. Go and hang out with Ben. Try and lead his conversation down some of the wonderful avenues. Ask him about cabbage and stuff. Ask him... He has the cheek to say my conversations go off the rails. I once watched that man do three hours on whether you keep birthday cake in the fridge. Toodle pip, everybody. Bye-bye.